Are you sending your kids outside and then getting the heebie-jeebies because you're finding ticks on them? It's that season. And today I'm going to walk you through some of the steps that we're taking here on our own farm to take care of the ticks and avoid them. this Ohio farmhouse. I'm Jenna. We're going to dive right in today talking about ticks. It's kind of the inevitable part of living in the country or sending your kids outside even to play in parks. Ticks are just everywhere unfortunately and I think I want to start out by attacking the problem of what do you do when your kids actually get bitten by a tick and it's latched on. Now if you just find a tick climbing on your kid and it hasn't latched on to them you're good but get rid of it right away. You want to smash it, flush it down the toilet, whatever you need to do to get rid of that sucker. But if it's actually latched in there, you want to make sure that you take the proper steps to actually remove the tick. And then there's a couple of things that I do right away to make sure that I combat anything like limes or something that could come along with that bite. The very first thing that I grab if a kid gets bitten by a tick is a leadum. This is a homeopathic remedy. It's just like a little tiny pellet and you're going to put it in their mouth and have them suck on it. This stimulates your body's responses and helps you to fight anything off. So this remedy is really good for fighting off any kind of tick-borne diseases that might come your way. In addition to Leadum, I use essential oils neat, which means that you're not going to dilute it at all and put it directly on the bite. I typically grab oregano or tea tree oil because those are known for being really combative. So I go ahead and just put that right on the spot, but you want to leave about 15 minutes or so in between when you take your homeopathy and when you use your essential oils because they can counteract each other and you don't want that to happen. You want to get the full benefits of both of those things. Okay, next I want to talk to you about preventing because let's be honest, we don't want these little guys in our house. So we want to try to keep them off of our kids in the first place. The very first thing that I want you to grab are these little bracelets. These are really inexpensive. You can grab them. There's a couple of different kinds. Um, of these bracelets that you can find in the camping section at like Walmart or Meyer, um, but they're just these little elastics. They're kind of like a hair tie, um, but they're infused with essential oils that the ticks don't like the smell of. Um, I have several different kinds. I have these. Um, I just picked up these bands as well. The kids got these in their Easter baskets actually, but these have like a little cartridge on them. And so I can refill those if I want to and add some more essential oils to them to kind of strengthen the smells. Um, so each one of them has a bracelet. Now their job is to put these on their ankles before they go outside to play. Now I think they're probably meant for your wrists, but the ticks are on the ground. So I make the kids put these around their ankles. Um, it seems to do a really good job of warding them off. It's just one more step of protection for them. Now you want to make sure though that you keep them sealed up in a Ziploc bag because that scent goes away after some time. But I make it through an entire summer season and through the fall with one batch of these. They will keep their scent for long enough that I can just get away with each kid having one for the season. Now, I don't know if you have property where you can do this, but if you do, guineas are really great birds for eating down the tick population. You're going to notice a huge reduction in the amount of ticks that you're seeing around on the property. Now, guinea aren't the cutest bird to look at and they're really kind of loud and annoying, <laughs> but chickens also do a really good job of eating down the bugs. Not quite as great as a guinea will, but if you need something that's going to be productive on your farm other than just eating bugs, you might want to go the chicken route. most important things that I do each summer is that I create several bottles of this. This is just a bug spray created with some essential oils. It's very simple to mix up and this gets sprayed all over on the kids. If I know that they're going out into the woods or if they're going to be wandering around the property helping or working or playing, 
This gets sprayed all up and down their arms and legs and on their back to make sure that we are repelling the ticks. It's all kinds of smells that they really don't like. So the idea is that they stay away from you. Now there are lots of oils that ticks don't like, but I use this mixture that has five essential oils and really you could just use whatever you have on hand. If you don't have all of them, that's fine. Or you could find a list that's pretty readily available on Pinterest. But I use a mixture of thyme, lemongrass, peppermint, rosemary, and lavender. Now we all know that water and oil don't mix. So you either want to use some fractionated aloe like this or some witch hazel. And so I'm just going to do equal parts in here and fill up my container. That's going to give the essential oil something that it can grab a hold of. And it still will go through your sprayer really well. So the kids are pretty much set to go between their bug bracelets and their spray. This is what I do. In addition to that, every single night I'm checking them. When they come in for a bath, pretty much summers, <laughs> baths are necessary every single night of the week. So every time that they come in for baths, we're doing checks to make sure that the ticks are not connected anywhere because the little boogers, you really can't feel them sometimes. I think it's one of the most annoying things about ticks is that you can't always feel them. They can be attached and under your skin and you really don't even notice that they're there. I find it to be really inconvenient because any other bug you're gonna notice really easily. Like if you get bitten by a mosquito or you get stung by a bee, you notice that right away. But ticks are really kind of sneaky. They get in there and they latch on without you even knowing that they're there. So every single night I'm checking the kids, making sure that they don't have anything before they hop into their beds. Now we've got the kids covered, but what do you do with your pet? When you have dogs or cats that come in and out of the house, you really need to make sure that they're being treated as well because all the rest of this is pointless if they're gonna be coming in the house and bringing ticks in with them. So really you need to make sure that the pets are treated as well. Now I will take this exact same spray that I spray on the kids and I will spritz it on the back of the dog in particular. He doesn't seem to mind it. He's got really long fur, so it's not even really getting to his skin, but he doesn't seem to be bothered by it. He goes outside and runs around in plays. Now he, I think it's, 100% fault of my own, but I don't remember to apply it to him nearly as often as it takes. So to be quite honest, I only do this with the dog when it's in a season where the ticks aren't nearly as prevalent, but when it is tick season and it is spring and there are just loads and loads of ticks, just in the past two days, I think that we have found between my sister's family and mine about six ticks on our family. And so we are really upping the game because this is just the beginning for us. So I will say that for the dog, I do go to conventional medicine for the first time. I really try to avoid it at all costs because I like to do things as naturally as possible, but sometimes it's not worth the risk to my family. And so I would rather have to put something on the dog that's going to work and keep him safe as well from the ticks. So we have in this season gone ahead and just put the conventional medicine on it on the back of his neck that's for ticks and fleas. And it seems to be doing a good job of warding those off. So we are upping our game as well, making sure that those kids every time that they go outside are putting the bracelets on because up until this point, we've been kind of loose with it because we haven't found that many ticks thus far. But as of the past couple of days, we have to really be on top of it. One of the most impactful things that you can do is to make sure that you keep all of the tall grass areas mowed down especially if it's by the areas where your kids are playing. You wanna make sure that you don't have really tall grasses because that's where they like to hang out. So make sure that you get that mowed down and clean up your property just to make sure that where the kids are gonna be out and playing that you are reducing the chances that the ticks want to hang out there.
I hope that this information was really helpful to you. There are so many perks to living in the country but ticks don't happen to be one of those. And so we wanna make sure that we are treating them properly and doing everything we can preventatively to make sure that we can be outside enjoying the land that God has blessed us with. So thanks for being here. I'll see you next week.